Some people they buy five day pass, they are only for money tonight, talking to friends. What are you talking about? Get a life. Get a life. Let just stay on the phone. No matter how important you are. Two minutes from third, I've said what well, I passed my message, I've dropped the phone, I have better things to do. My words are expired. Say, this word that comes out of my mouth shall not come out void, but I shall accomplish the reason why it has been said. So every time I speak, it is anointing, it is it inspires greatness, it inspires excellence. I don't just talk any here. Come on. So I bless God for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. And I know that for everyone that is privileged to hear of the word that God has spoken to me to deliver tonight will never live here the same. Amen. I want you to open your mouth and open your heart and look beyond my suit. Look beyond my stature, my height, and my age. It's not about that. Serious business. My mandate, when I met the queen last year, I got personally invited to come and see the queen to have a, a dinner with the queen at Buckingham Palace. And they were, inter they were interviewing me for that. And they said, what is your life? Well, what, what do you, what's your life goal and vision? I said, my life can be summed up in four words. Touching lives, making impact. Simple. My life is only about touching lives and making it about whatever does not fall into that vision. I don't engage myself in it. What is the landmark and plan of your life? How do you sum up your life in four words? And this year that became our ministerial mandate from next year. Our ministry's mandate is now is shifted from my personal mandate to our ministry mandate. And God gave me a different mandate as an individual. My personal mandate from 2009 on war is in nine words. Nine words. Setting the pace, three. Leading the way, three. Making six. Blazing the trail, six. Three. Making nine. My mandate from 2009 is in nine words. Lead the way, blaze the trail, set the pace. Let others follow. I amaze you to the glory of God, I'm only 22. My 23rd birthday is January next year. So, it's not about your age. It's about the Monday when the young man, when, when the gentleman said, uh, he has talent. I said, well, I don't have talent. It's not the talent, it's an assignment. <clears throat> to, to say it's a talent is underestimating the anointing. Come on. Uh, when people come and sing, they say, want to perform. Perform what? Have you ever performed on your minister? It's beyond a talent. It is an option and an anointing. There is that option in your life where you can see it is not a talent. It is more than a talent. Like the Hebrew man will say. <laughs> it is the option of God on your life that makes you different. But that's not what I've been sent here tonight. I have not been sent to inspire greatness tonight. I have been sent to prepare you for greatness. Paul said in the book of Romans, I have desired to come along to see you and I am impart unto you spiritual gifts. And you cannot give what you don't have. No. It's impossible. Bless God for my life for how he has brought me. I said in one of my conferences last month. Remember many years ago, I used to go to Methodist Boys High School. Our school uniform was white, white, white. So yeah, white dress, trousers, white shirt, and a white jacket. Making a suit. I used to wear that to help my mother in a shop in Lagos at that time. We were living in a room apartment. To the glory of God, I said, I used that same white suit to preach the gospel to thousands and millions all over the world. Because God can change your story irrespective of your background, your age, and your color. And young people have come to speak to you have not come to speak to you because of what I read. I don't listen to everybody's message. Not every person can. I go to some places and I just hear the person preach I just walk out. So you don't have the soul style. I'm sorry. It's not arrogance. Yes, you eat. I'm t I eat a lot. You know when you travel and preach everywhere, you meet people, they take you out, they feed you, they take care of you, you travel to the glory of God all over the world. This year alone been about 15, 20 countries. I'm off to Berlin on Friday by the grace of God. So people toast you, they take you to, they cook well and all that. So I'm eating different type of food. 
So when I eat, I know this woman didn't put steel. They, they didn't put salt, too much salt. I know what is good and what is not. So when you eat some false and verses, and I've been received from those who have obtained the promises, not those who can explain the promise. So I don't explain it. It's not what I've read in a book. It's what I've obtained and experienced that I've come to impact onto you tonight. What the Lord has brought me through. At 14, I was already traveling to nation, to the glory of God. At 16, I was already my country's ambassador to the United Nations. <coughs> For youth. To the glory of God, I met Johnson Nelson Mandela when I was age of 16. At my 16th birthday, six, six months after, I had already met 50 years of state in one year. In one year. Between last year, November, and today, I got even count the number of current sitting heads of government. I was invited to Portugal in December last year. Met with the Portuguese Prime Minister, the Portuguese President, and the head of the European Council. The mandate of God for my life is beyond just ministry, it's not just church. It's a Daniel and a Joseph anointing. That God has set you as prince and a king and as priest in the head. That's the mandate of God. So you're not just a preacher, just from what you read in the Bible. You are applying the word. You have obtained the promises. It's manifesting in your life. So, because I, I'm a law graduate, there's what we call locus standi. What is your locus? What, what is your background? <coughs> I've come tonight to prepare you for greatness, not to inspire you for greatness. Because there's no doubt you are going to be great. Amen. It's like someone coming up to me and saying, Oh, I see you, you're going to be great. It's not a news. I knew it. <laughs> the Nigerian Tribune interviewed me. They did a three page interview to the glory of God of the, what the Lord is doing in my life last Saturday. Three or big. Don't pay dime for advert. Never. Matter of fact, I said to a lady yesterday, I said, we, By the time you are coming to interview, you will have to pay for my story. I'm getting to the place where people have to pay for my story. I don't pay. Then he goes, what did he say? He said to me, how do you, what do you feel about meeting world leaders and sitting down with world leaders and talking, run a charity, sit on many government board, speaking on behalf of young people all over the world. I said, what, how do you? I said, I knew it was part of the deal. I'm not, so, it's not a surprise that I'm meeting heads of state. It's not, it's not a surprise. Yesterday night I was with my ambassador. At the Nigerian High Commission for a Diplomatic Dinner with Nigerian leaders and British leaders in the UK. <coughs> so it's not, I knew it from the onset. Like my one of my father in law, Bishop David said, it's, it's, I knew it. I screamed, I can never be poor. I caught the revelation. I got I knew it that I, it was part of you. Because my godfather, when I was in high school, came to me on my birthday and gave me Proverbs 2229. He said, have you seen a man diligent in his work, in his business? He shall stand before kings and not meet men. And he looked at me and said, die or be diligent. He said, let diligence be your watchword. And I got that word, diligent, until today that word is continued to manifest in my life. I met everybody you can mention about. I'm looking forward to meeting Obama. It's not going to be too long. Amen. It's not going to be too long. <laughs> I've now seen a man diligent in his works. He will stand before kings. So when you when you do something that when you are diligent, you don't need a truth say I will tell you you are going to stand before kings. You don't need a problem. So I haven't come tonight to mesmerize you and make you feel oh you are going. I know it. I can see it over you. You are going to be great. Amen. But it's what well, is not the being great that is the issue, with staying great that is the issue. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Preaching since I was eight. There's a video on YouTube. If you put down Israel, it's a video of our first crusade. The Lord used me to hold that crusade when I was nine. We had about 50 people in the auditorium. I wasn't invited to preach. I organized it at nine myself in Evans Square in Lagos. Red Dead the chair, got the camera, man. God sent me help us on the city who saw that there was an unction on this young man. I would never stop holding crusade. We have millions of crusades all over America. Been interviewed on CNN Live, BBC Live. They sent cars to pick me in the house. <coughs> to the glory of God. 
So, to have stayed on that long from about the age of eight, and at 22, and I have a long way to go, one main thing that is of concern to me is staying great. It is key. It is key to understand you can, everybody can be great. You can get a job, but maintaining the job. You can fall in love, but staying in love is an issue. Or it's an issue, whatever it is. You see?